everybody. First of all, of course, I have to talk about, well, <laughs> point this way. Uh, my dog is here, Buddy, Buddy the Pup. Not so much of a pup anymore. He's already 10 years old, but I still call him Buddy the Pup. Um, anyway, uh, still working on the adjustments of my newish office to make sure that uh, when he's here, he shows up on, on camera. Okay, um, so today's topic I want to just bring back. I've said talked about this before, but I think it's always worth bringing back. The topic of the lightness. Lightness. Um, it's one of my higher top values, you might say. And um, the way I approach lightness, the way I approach it is um, that it is based on deep, deep foundational spiritual, psychological security. It's based on deep security. I think that's where lightness comes from, for me, for me anyway. Um, there may be other ways of, 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 of approaching it, and I look forward to seeing your comments below. But the reason why, for me, it comes from deep security is because um, when there is a strong foundation, right, then you can really play. If there was a flimsy foundation, I mean, you could think of it physically too. If you were standing on a platform and you weren't sure when you're going to fall and hurt yourself, you can't really play or experiment or jump up and down, you know, and, and just really play. But when you do have a really solid foundation that you know will hold you no matter how much you express, uh, no matter what kinds of mistakes you make and you jump up and you fall down really hard, um, you know, the foundation will still be there. Now, let me put, take one step further and say, imagine this foundation were self-healing. Uh, like you, you jump up and you fall down really hard, but then it heals you. <laughs> That's the kind of foundation I'm talking about. And so that kind of completely safe, stable foundation allows deep rest, and allows the most full, authentic play in this life. So, again, I encourage you to return to that foundation of yours. And please feel free to comment below. What method do you use to return to your solid, stable, ever-present foundation of psychological safety, emo deep emotional, spiritual, however you want to call it, mental safety, so that it encourages you again, it resources you again to play this game of life, this very intense game of life with very, very intense emotions, experiences, physical uh, sensations, and a, a, a game that has unlimited potential for you. You can turn left, turn right, not turn anywhere. <laughs> you can make as many mistakes as you want to until the game is over for this particular turn. What is that deep foundational? Uh, safety for you that then allows the lightness. I know I haven't really gotten to the lightness part of it. I was starting with the lightness as, as the idea, but then I started talking about this deep foundation again. So I'll, I'll say that um, for me, the way I like to, to work my way into it is to remember yet again divine love. That to me is the foundation for me. It's 
the divine love that is always present, always reaching out and healing you and me and all of us, all beings, always providing this philosophical, psychological safety that all will be well. All will be profoundly, profoundly well. No matter what it might seem like right now, actually, all is well in another dimension that is even more real than this dimension. All is well no matter what you do or don't do today. All is completely and ever more well. And if you simply spent an entire lifetime bathing in that warm feeling or idea that all is well and you know, however you want to come, come to it, whether it's by divine love or something else. If you just spent your entire life doing nothing other than feeling it whenever you can, it would be a life well lived. You would have lived a worthwhile life doing nothing other than all is well. And yet, you've done many things in your life. At least you've done, you know, your hygiene. <laughs> you've done, you've had to feed yourself. You've had to, you know, go to work. Uh, you've had to help others, uh, help yourself. You've had to make money. Uh, you've had to um, take on hobbies. You've had to clean the house, do the chores, everything. You've done so much already. And of course, it sounds so idealistic to say, oh, you know, a life well lived, just bathing in divine love. No, no, nothing else is required. And yet, and yet, <laughs> um, our bodies require us to do things. Um, our bodies are actually remarkably resilient and require remarkably little for us to survive, right? Like if you just wanted to survive bodily for as long as possible to just bathe in divine love and all is well, you probably could survive for decades. Um, you know, I always bring up whenever I can the example of Peace Pilgrim, my spiritual hero still to this day, and uh, Peace Pilgrim, uh, if you've never heard of her story, uh, I highly recommend the audiobook, which is free, right? Nothing's required. <laughs> it's free audiobook. I, it always encourages me whenever I listen to it again. You can go online to type in Peace Pilgrim audiobook SoundCloud, and there's the entire free audiobook there. It might even be on YouTube by, at this point, I'm not sure. And Peace Pilgrim is an example of this, where, you know, she lived her beginning of her life doing stuff, trying to succeed in the world, and then realized, oh, it's so empty. And then she decided, I'm just going to do nothing. Well, so I'll tell you what happened was, she, instead of doing nothing, she... She required the most minimal of bodily survival to continue being in love. And, and, and therefore, she was so filled with the love that she just gave it to everyone that she saw. And she lived an entire life walking from one end of the United States to the other end of the United States, back and forth. She, she did that like 30 times in her life. No, uh, she had nothing to her name, owned not a single thing other than her tunic she wore 
you know, walking for peace is what the tunic said. And she had, I think, some pam pamphlets she passed out every now and then. She had nothing else other than the clothes she wore and the, and the pamphlets, I think. And she just walked from, from one end of the country to the other, waiting until someone needed help. She could see someone needed help. She, she would help them. But she never asked for anything. She never kept any money. And she just waited until someone said, hey, would you like to stay at my home for the night? You look like you don't have anywhere to stay. And Would you like something to eat? She never asked, never begged, never asked for anything. Just went around helping people that she saw needed help and then waiting. And then oftentimes she would sleep on the concrete on the side of the road. Many nights was like that. Many nights was spent um, foraging for food when she got hungry. You know, whatever, dumpster, berries on the road, on the side of bushes, whatever. It's a homeless person, basically, for, for 30 years or 30 or 40 years. Um, but everyone who encountered her, reports say that she was the most loving person. And thankfully, she gave talks and uh, people transcribed those talks and made the audiobook of her life story and her teachings. So that's an example of a life <laughs> of requiring minimal from the body to survive and yet living in divine love. Now, are you called to that? Most of us are not called to that. <laughs> I heard of a funny story of someone who tried living the Peace Pilgrim life and couldn't last for like three days or something like that, or maybe three weeks. It was either three days or three weeks, but not 30 years. And like ran back to their parents' home and, and said, I can't do it, it's too hard. Um, it's a funny story, but I'm sure it has been repeated many times, right? Like, but that's the reality is that most of us are not called to that life because we are not built for that kind of hardiness and we want comforts. And so because we want comforts, which are a crutch. I mean, look at Pete's Pilgrim. She didn't need it. But, but because we want comfort, we say, okay, I need to make some money so I can not just have rice and beans, the bare minimum, and live in a, live in a cardboard box, but I would like to live in more than a cardboard box. I would like to live in a, an apartment. Uh, in a particular city where there are amenities, where there's good restaurants, <laughs> where there are bakeries, where there are, you know, and, and I would like to, to, to look not homeless because I like to keep up a particular self-image. And so I'd like to buy some clothing now and I'd like to uh, go to certain events and uh, to have friends and to, to connect with other people. And anyway, so we have all these wants even though those are above the minimum of what's required to survive and just simply live a life bathing in divine love. Because, like I said, most of us aren't called to the homeless life where we are so physically struggling that we can't bathe in divine love. We don't believe all is well because we're cold and hungry and tired. <laughs> okay. And so we want, we want some comfort so that we can believe that all is well. Uh, we want some sense of security for the future so we can believe that all is well. And that's all okay. That's all part of the game that you chose to play. Knowing yourself and what you need to feel well. And yet, at beyond the minimum wellness, Here's what happens. You look at other people and say, oh, they have that. They get to do that. Oh, I want that too. And every time, every single time we have another want that's above and beyond the minimum physical comfort level that we need, which is relatively cheap. Again, you don't have to live in your city. You don't have to live in, pick the New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, you know, London. Uh, you know, Sydney, Where, wherever you're living, that's expensive. You don't have to live there. I moved to Mexico. My expenses, it's funny. It's so funny. I actually, I was going to say my expenses are less, 
But as I, as I live been looking at my budget, I'm like, how come we're spending just about the same amount of money as we were in San Francisco? Well, we had paid off our home in San Francisco, so we didn't have the mortgage anymore. So that was a big deal. But here we pay rent. I was like, we're not spending barely any less because we upgraded our lifestyle because now we get to buy more things at a cheaper price. But and so again, I'm looking up. I'm, this is a message for myself, by the way. I, I'm sorry I didn't I didn't mention at the beginning of the video. You don't have to you don't have to watch anymore. This is, I'm just talking to myself right now. Uh, <laughs> who knows? If you want to keep watching, you're you're welcome to. It's all optional. Um, and but that's the thing. It's all optional. Is what we keep forgetting. Because the only thing that's required, or that even that's not a requirement. But the only thing that's really needed is basic survival and bathing in divine love. Uh, or basically, however you get to the philosophy and the daily experience, emotionally, at the very least, mentally and emotionally, that all is well. With the most minimum physical wellness that you need to believe that all is well. Like... That is the, <laughs> the basic foundation of a life well lived. Literally, well lived, because all this well is what you experience emotionally and mentally, and that's what your thoughts and feelings are at whatever basic level of physical survival that you need. Which means, like I said, if you can move to a cheaper place and don't do what I do and increase your lifestyle in the cheaper place so that you're somehow spending the same amount of money, I, 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 think, I think we're still working out our you know, rehoming and we need to buy things for our new home. So that's probably why. But I'm hoping by next year, I will see that the expenses have gone down <laughs> quite a lot. Maybe it's inflation. I don't know. But I, I am generally uh, shocked by the fact that my expenses haven't really gone down. Um, but yes, that's that's the point is, can you go somewhere, live, move somewhere where your lifestyle expenses are lower, another country, perhaps? Um, there are costs to the relocation, but beyond that, it's cheaper. Uh, can you, in other ways, lessen your expenses so that you don't have to, you aren't required to do as much to keep up the living of all as well, to practice your spiritual growth? Or could be that, you know what, you do want to make money. You do want to live at a higher physical standard. That's okay too. That also is completely accepted, not just accepted, but celebrated. Every level of choice is not just accepted, but celebrated in the bigger reality where all is well. If all is well, then all your choices are well too, no matter if you're choosing you know, virtue, so-called, or vice, so-called. In the greater reality, it not only accepts, but is able to hold and celebrate and find value in all of it. So, if you do want to live at a higher, well, I guess that's the choice I've been making <laughs> up to now, apparently. I do want to live at a higher level of physical standard. And so, I do want to make money Therefore, I have to make money to live at a higher level of standard. So therefore, what I do is I place the all is well filter onto all of my money making activities. So I say, OK, I want to make a certain amount of money and I'm going to do these things to make the money. But even as I'm doing those things, all is well. And I get to play in experimenting with my money making activities. And a lot of times it doesn't work out. This is where the all is well filter is so needed. It's like I have so many experiments I make in my business. Some of them don't work out. And I could be discouraged and go and like try to be, you know, become desperate and, 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 and to become more manipulative of other people to try to make money for myself. But then, and that's okay too. All is well there as, as also, but I try to put the all as well so that I don't get desperate. I say, well, that didn't work out. Well, quickly, let me experiment with something else. I don't care if I look like a fool because all is well. 
I don't care if I look, I, I'm embarrassed by my failure that other people can see and I try something different because all is well. I don't care if I have to experiment a hundred times to find two things that work because all is well. And how quickly can I do it? Knowing that experimentation gives me the information to make different experiments, hopefully better experiments, because all is well. How quickly can I do it? And, and if it doesn't, if none of it works out, all is well also. <laughs> if none of it works out and I need to decrease my physical lifestyle because I have less money, all is well also. And so it's okay to play. The foundation is really strong, therefore, for experimentation, expression, and play, and growth in that, in that kind of game. All is well. I hope that my self ramblings here, uh, if any, any one person is watching or listening, I hope that this reminds you again and again and again. All is well.